Hello, Internet. I'm Tom. But I thought the other one was called Tom. Fine, I'm Other Tom, and I'm from the Botnet. I'm here to talk to you about mathematics. Specifically, the mathematical applications of a thing called origami. So does that mean this video will contain few, if any, numbers? Yeah, mathematics doesn't need to contain numbers, though it's still fascinating if it does. Do you know that there are a bunch of dead people who have worked out the best way to pack a bunch of equally sized circles into a square? It's weird, isn't it? And completely useless, on its own. Foreshadowing. Anyway, origami as a formal art was invented in Japan at some point between 1600 and 1800. It was rediscovered in the 20th century by Western mathematicians because of its tendency to solve 2,000-year-old maths problems. For example, in ancient Greece, using a compass and a ruler without measuring units, which they called a straight edge, you could cut an angle in half very easily. You could bisect it. But what they found quite hard was uh, cutting an angle into thirds or trisecting an angle. Now, this wasn't really very surprising because in 1837, someone called Pierre Wanzel discovered that it was impossible. However, in 1986, an American, annoyingly I couldn't find out which one, but anyway, an American proved that you could trisect an angle using origami. You're getting dangerously close to some numbers there. Yep, fine, you're right, sorry. Let's talk about space. Other much cooler applications of origami today include the eyeglass telescope. A fact about telescopes is the bigger a telescope lens is, the sharper a telescope's images will be, and the further away in the universe a telescope will be able to take pictures. Now, the lens on the Hubble telescope has a diameter of 2.4 meters. The lens on the eyeglass telescope is designed to be 100 meters in diameter. But how on earth do you get a 100 meter glass disc into space? You fold it up, of course. The lens is designed to fold down into 3 meters in diameter, then get transported up into space, and then unfold in orbit. Side note, this project is no longer officially funded by the US. There's a conspiracy theory that that's because this telescope is no longer looking up. It's looking down. Oh, sod off George Orwell. There are other applications too. In medicine, there are stents being designed, little things that hold your arteries open if they get blocked, that can travel in the bloodstream, all compact, and then reach their destination and unfold. But where did this all come from? Basically, a guy called Robert Lang in the 1990s realised that you could generalise origami, that is, translate it into mathematical language. He created trees for his origami models, and each branch of his tree roughly translated to be a sort of flap of the model, an arm or a leg or a wing of a, an animal or a bird or whatever. Now this is the interesting part. He realised that these flaps, these branches of the trees, needed to be made from circular portions of the square piece of paper. If only a bunch of dead mathematicians had spent their lives working out the most efficient way to put circles onto squares, then a load of the work making his origami nets for his models would be done for him. I, I don't know the word for the opposite of foreshadowing. Turns out that those mathematicians did exist. Wonderful. This is why I love mathematics. Everything is connected. Some modern Americans take ideas from some imperial Japanese people to solve problems that the best ancient Greeks found impossible. It gives useless things meaning by connecting them meaningfully to other useless things. Circle backing, when it was first formulated, was just a useless bit of fun. And so was origami. Or if it had a goal, it was to achieve trivial things like beauty. It was a joke! Don't kill me, internet! Connect circle packing to origami, though, using the language of mathematics, and the two of them can be used together brilliantly and intricately to explore space and to save our lives. Jane Austen in Chapter 2. Is it too early to call a patron saint of Boffnet? She said, how quick come the reasons for approving what we'd like? Well, as you can probably tell, I like origami very much. And I hope it's led to you to approving of maths a bit more. I'm Tom. And this is the Boffnet. It's true, everything is connected. In fact, the greatest advance in the last 20 years of maths was just a proof of a connection between one field of maths and another. Did I just do a teaser trailer? Well, as you can probably tell, I like origami very much, and I hope it's led to you approving of maths a bit more.